Today we're talking about drive chains. What is a drive chain, you ask? Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur at Bitcoin Pleb and all around raging capitalist. And today I wanted to dive into this concept of drive chains and talk about what it promises to bring. And this is very much building on the theme around increasing the extensibility of Bitcoin and enabling new use cases on top of or adjacent to uh, Bitcoin. I've done an entire sort of video that I will link in the description down below on kind of DeFi on Bitcoin and some of the various categories or approaches that projects are taking to enable uh, additional utility on top of or around Bitcoin. And so today we're gonna pick apart what I think is a really interesting proposal, uh, which is codified in the um, BIP 300 and BIP 301. Uh, BIP is a Bitcoin improvement proposal. Uh, from Paul Sezork, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that uh, wrong, uh, but this is sort of his, um, you know, brainchild and is something he's been kind of uh, working with the community around uh, for some time now. So this is really fascinating stuff. You won't want to miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is nothing short than an absolute pleasure to have you. And for those new to the channel, and I know there are many of you, uh, over 80% of you watching right this very moment, in fact, are not currently subscribed. And so if you like this content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing and merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, uh, including videos like this, which sort of explore some of the uh, frontier of technology of Bitcoin, uh, you know, DeFi on Bitcoin, Lightning Network. I do wallet tutorials, news analysis. You want it, I cover it. That is the name of this game. But with all that out of the way, let's jump right in. So again, Paul and others have been working on this. I mean, this is an operational thing. Like this is not just an idea. Uh, it is very much a, um, uh, a thing. You know, you can go look at the open source code. Uh, there's even a GUI for you to, you know, play around with this uh, if you want. And so I'll link all of that in the description down below. But the motivation behind this is to essentially enable experimentation uh, adjacent and connected to Bitcoin. And so really, if you go all the way back, I mean, the whole kind of impetus for altcoins was that, you know, you had someone come along and say, you know what, I wish Bitcoin did this, or I wish Bitcoin had this feature, or I wish it could enable smart contracts in this way, right? And so you had the start of altcoins try and explore some of these other areas uh, that were not adequately supported at the time by Bitcoin. And indeed, as we've covered in many videos on this channel, this is on purpose, right? Bitcoin uh, script and Bitcoin itself is purposefully simplistic to minimize attack surface and make it the most robust foundation and settlement layer uh, and money that we've ever known as a civilization. And so since then, we have had, of course, different waves of Cambrian explosions of altcoins, some legitimate kind of intentions and projects, and many that are, uh, you know, much more nefarious and outright scams. And so drive chain and the combination of BIP 300 and BIP 301 uh, seek to provide a Petri dish for anyone to experiment and create their own Bitcoin sidechain. Um, and so a sidechain, as we will discuss, is that it is an adjacent and sort of child blockchain to the parent that is Bitcoin. And so what happens is, you know, you can send Bitcoin uh, through a peg-in process to a sidechain where you can then conduct whatever it is that you want. Uh, you know, this could be to enable faster transaction times. This could be to enable more privacy. Uh, this could be to enable richer functionality in terms of smart contracts. You know, whatever the sort of use case is, these sidechains could be spun up to facilitate that in a way to where they still respect the 21 million hard cap of Bitcoin. And so that's the core idea and motivation. How do we enable experimentation on an opt-in basis 
uh, without disturbing the base chain. And so I think there's a ton of merit to this vision, right? How do we bring, it's all about how do we bring more and more utility and use cases and functionality to the Bitcoin ecosystem without needing to spin up you know, a bunch of extra tokens, which more often than not serve to enrich, you know, the founding team of these different projects. And so let's now move into kind of what it what it is. Again, a lot of this I am drawing directly from some of Paul's presentations that he's done. Uh, he did a great presentation at the uh, 2021 Bitcoin conference. And there's other uh, kind of conferences and um, presentations that are linked in the drivechain.info um, page that I will put in the description. But as he lays it out, one is this idea of full autonomy. That means that individuals can experiment in a way in which they are not sort of blocked, right? In a permissionless fashion. Uh, and so if someone has an idea for, hey, I think Bitcoin should be able to do this, they can go and with these BIPs, they'd be able to spin up their very own sidechain. And so each of these sidechains would kind of be like an application, you know, think of like on your, on your phone. And we'll get into some of the practical applications later, but think of something like Monero. Monero has uh, received a lot of favor over time, particularly for privacy-minded Bitcoiners. And so imagine that you wanted to go and create your little sidechain where the Bitcoin that you peg into that sidechain now operates by the rules of Monero in terms of having enhanced privacy features, etc. And so the beauty of this is someone could spin this up, you know, a developer could come and spin this up, and then any Bitcoin users could opt into using this you know additional sort of side chain and it's not in any way kind of detracting from the base chain it's not changing anything it's not uh you know it's not introducing all the kind of drama that comes with you know new proposals for big change and indeed as paul describes this could have the very interesting effect of potentially ending any future hard forks you know if you think about this anytime we have a hard fork it's really because of this highly contentious debate that would ultimately change the sort of consensus uh, of the protocol. And so in this paradigm, if someone had an idea, they could just spin a side chain up and, you know, uh, market it to the community. And if the community finds value in it, then they would engage with it. And so this first element, full autonomy, is about enabling this type of experimentation in a kind of permissionless uh, fashion that avoids some of this, uh, the drama that would otherwise come with trying to make huge changes to the base protocol. And this flows into the second kind of uh, way that Paul sort of characterizes this, which is protect the base layer, right? And so the whole idea is how do we enable experimentation adjacent to Bitcoin and connected to it uh, in a way that doesn't disturb the base layer? And as we will discuss, what's really interesting about the drive chain concept is, is that it employs blinded merged mining. Um, what does this mean? Merge mining is essentially when a Bitcoin miner devotes hash power across multiple uh, chains, if you will. And so merge mining could be, you know, let's say I have Ian side chain over here and a Bitcoin miner over here would have to run a full node both for the Bitcoin blockchain as well as for Ian's side chain. And so therein lies one challenge, right? The miner has to run a full node uh, for each of these side chains. What the blind part of blind merge mining introduces is it removes that need for the miner to have a full node on the side chain. And so the miner can basically collect transaction fees associated with these side chains without even kind of acknowledging or validating the side chains themselves. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that actually occurs. Uh, and that is the sort of third element of what he talks about, which is improved minor incentives. Technically, this is codified in BIP 301, whereas BIP 300 is kind of like the ability to spin up these different side chains uh, in a way that respects the 21 million hard cap. And then BIP 301 is specifically related to using the kind of bl blind merge mining uh, and another concept that we'll talk about, which is uh, hashed escrow, to enable this world in which a Bitcoin miner benefits from these from the fees generated from these other side chains, uh, but doesn't have to like spin up an additional node for each of them. And as Paul explains, he's written a really good uh, blog article on this. 
this helps with the long-term Bitcoin security budget. Uh, and so I won't go deep into that now, but you know, think about the fact that eventually we will get to a point in which minor revenue is comprised uh, primarily and ultimately exclusively by transaction fees, right? You'll no longer have the block subsidy as the inflation rate for Bitcoin continues to uh, trend towards zero. And so that's yet another really nice feature of this proposal is that it, it helps with that long-term security budget. It gives new revenue sources for Bitcoin miners to keep doing what they're doing, i.e. securing the uh, Bitcoin blockchain and any of these uh, adjacent sidechains. So let's now talk a little bit uh, more about how this actually works. Number one, it operates um, with a two-way peg. And so you may have heard of sidechains uh, such as Liquid or RSK, which is what Sovereign uh, uses under, under their um, kind of DeFi on Bitcoin uh, platform. And so the way a two-way peg works is, you know, a user will send Bitcoin to a particular sort of output or address. And then the user can do whatever they want, you know, in the sidechain sort of environment. And then when they're ready to peg out or get their, you know, original sort of Bitcoin back, they submit what's called a SPV or simplified payment verification proof that proves that they were the ones that, uh, you know, uh, initially sent the Bitcoin in the first place. What's really neat about a drive chain is this concept of a hash rate escrow. So typically, a lot of the side chains that we just rattled off operate through a federated manner, meaning if I'm a user and I wanna peg out my Bitcoin, that peg out process is controlled by a federation of entities. And these entities could be you know, Bitcoin mining entities, they could be Bitcoin exchanges, uh, but basically they're like they're companies, right? And so there is some valid criticism about this kind of federated approach, uh, given that you ultimately have to trust other entities in order to, to peg the Bitcoin back out. The drive chain proposal utilizes hash rate escrow, where instead of this kind of group of, uh, of members that ultimately have keys to unlock funds from uh, from the sort of side chain. Instead, what happens is that miners simply direct hash rate towards it. Now, Paul goes into the gory depths of what how this actually works using kind of a, uh, a prison escape and a sequence of gates as an analogy. So I'm not even going to attempt to replicate that in this video. Rather, I will leave a link in the description if you want to dig into more about how that actually works. Uh, but in this way, I think it is an improvement on some of the uh, sidechain concepts that we see today, which is very interesting. Now, however, there are always trade-offs. And so what the implication of this is ultimately that final settlement only occurs after a period of three months. Uh, and you may say that sounds insane, um, but that is how this process works with the hash escrow. And essentially what happens is that a full three months of activity on these side chains can be compressed into a single 32 byte hash, which is embedded and written directly into the Bitcoin blockchain. And so the whole kind of drive chain logic operates based on, uh, based on these different hashes. So what that means in simplistic terms is that withdrawals are very, very, very slow. Um, and that's the trade-off. You know, you go with a, a more centralized federated model, you can get the withdrawals quicker, uh, you go this particular model where it's this kind of hash rate escrow concept and you can deposit any time. So that's that's uh, a nice part. But when you want to withdraw, it's going to be very, very slow. So what are some different applications of this? Uh, it could really be, any, I mean, think of any altcoin, right? You could, uh, Paul's done a video where he basically uh, Co like forks and copies Zcash, which is another privacy centric, uh, you know, crypto asset. Um, and, you know, you ba he basically creates like bit Zcash, you know, as a side as the side chain. And so um, privacy benefits come to mind as a potential application, you could basically have um, users on this side chain conducting fully and utterly private transactions as much as they want, right? And you can enable all of that in a way that respects the 21 uh, million hard cap. Very cool stuff. Uh, Paul outlines other examples. You know, you have um, some uh, cool project. I think it's called Saya that he mentions, which is like peer-to-peer -peer cloud storage. 
So, you know, it could be uh, richer smart contract functionality to enable decentralized finance apps. Like any of those ideas can ultimately be spun up through one of these side chains uh, to enable the additional expressiveness and utility and functionality uh, that different members within the ecosystem may want to do. And so if you want to tinker around with this, you can see the following um, releases on their main page. And so I'll link this in the description down below. Uh, I'll probably do a future video where I actually go into this, maybe on their test net uh, and, and play around and see what we can do. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and close this video out. So there you have it, my friends. We looked at what I think is a very fascinating concept of drive chains as codified in BIP 300 and 301. And it's really kind of taking side chains, in, in my view, to the next level by incorporating all the different things we talked about, you know, hash rate, escrow, blind merged mining, et cetera, to ultimately create this world in which we can enable permissionless innovation and experimentation on top of or adjacent to Bitcoin in a way that doesn't disturb the base layer. So I think this is one of several very interesting kind of efforts and projects undergoing. Uh, again, it's not kind of vaporware. And so Paul and some of the contributors involved in this are, you know, basically getting the word out over a long period of time. You know, any such uh, BIP takes some time to, uh, to manifest, um, but it's interesting stuff. And so I encourage you to go check it out. Um, but with that, I hope you found this interesting and valuable. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment down below um, with you know questions or topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. I really do take that into account when creating the schedule for the channel. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this here. As always, my friends, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.